What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we're going to go through how I set up my Icons Brain Fly Barless Unit. I've had quite a few questions. So I got the trusted old T-Rex 550 out today. Blades are off, of course. Main blades and tail blades. So we have safe. This is a older Brain a V1. So it has to be powered up for it to work. A lot of the new icons, or all of the new icons and brains, you don't have to have main power plugged in. It runs off power from the USB, so if you have a V2, newer one, you don't have to have power, but since it's a V1, I do. So, we have the brain powered up with the helicopter. Of course, blades are off, and we are using my DX9 power transmitter powered up. Everything works like it should. Okay, so now I'm going to rig the camera up here get you looking at the software and we're going to start with how I set mine up. All right, so I got you guys rigged up here. I'm trying to do it the best way I could. I tried to do this with screen recording, but I don't know how to do that. So we're going to do it the old way. Hopefully it turns out good. So we're going to go ahead and open up our icon software. So now we're in the very main page of the icon. So you're going to be in your wizard menu and we'll go through all these menus up here in a second. So now this is your very first thing. So these are your little identification things. And I like to set these up just so when I open up the model, you know, it's automatically blade name. I got rotor tech tail blades, a line motor, castle ESCs, power source, servos, and so on. So you can set this up to your liking. So now the next page is going to be your orientation for how the brain or icon is set up. So go through here. You're going to have top up, wires front, bottom left, wires front, and so on and so forth, and you just read through all these. Mine is set up top up, wires back, so that is the way that I have mine oriented. Now this is going to help tell the, the receiver which, or the fly ballless unit, which way it is mounted, and that'll be for your actual gyro. So the next is your receiver that you're using. So now it has, now of course this is a V1 again, so these three here are not highlighted. If it's a V2, they will be. But you can go through here. Now, with Icon, everything that you want to know or do is going to either be on the left side. It is very detailed. It will explain everything. Just have to read it. So, of course, I am running DSMX 11 millisecond satellite. I am running two on this model. So, I just click down here. And you can, when you get ready to bind, you can go down here, click Spectrum Bind, and it will bind up. Now, if you're running uh, Futaba, High Tech, or standard receiver like s Dover, if you're running DSM2, uh, the newer ones will allow you to run uh, OpenTX, FlySky, SRXL. You can run on this one. So, of course, I'm set up. Select your receiver. Now, your next is going to be where your servo should be plugged in. So, it's going to be a full diagram. This is, explains everything on which servo goes where, tail servo, servo 3, 2, 1, 0, what your swash plate type is over here. So these are going to be the different types of swash plates, and this is going to tell you which servo does what. So this is very informative. Over here, again, one in the swash plate picture is on one on the unit, so on and so forth. So you just go down your menu here, you read everything you want to know. Now your next is going to be your transmitter setup. Now this is a very important step. So if you noticed here, you have your aileron, elevator, tail, pitch, tail gain, throttle, auxiliary one, common setup, so on and so forth. So you're going to notice you're going to have percentages on the right-hand side here. So now, this is very important to when you move your ailerons, for example, you have a positive 100 and a negative 100. Same with elevator, positive 99, negative 99. Tail, positive 100, negative 100. Now, when you first go to set this up, you're not going to have that. So what you have to do is if you guys can see this, so you're going to have to go into your servo setup on your transmitter, and you're going to have to go to your travel. And you're going to need to adjust your travel, aileron, elevator, and rudder, until when you move your stick that this shows negative and positive 100. So you're going to have to do it with your ailerons. Adjust it till you get a positive and negative 100. Elevator, positive and negative 100 tail positive negative 100 and so on that is a very important step that i always see a lot of people overlook so now that you're going to have your transmitter set up properly make sure everything's moving in the right way left tail right tail left aileron right aileron back forward it's going to tell you right here left forward nose left nose right backwards right so just follow everything step by step again it's going to tell you on the left side too 
how to set your endpoints so that the full stick deflection indicates a positive and negative 100. And it'll tell you to do this on every single one. So once you have your transmitter input setup done, you're gonna to wanna to move on to your next page. And now this is your swashplate type selection. So you're gonna have a counter, -wise, counter rotation or counter clock or clockwise rotation or counterclockwise rotation. This is going to be which way your head spins. On 99% of the helicopters, at least that I've ever messed with, almost all of them, they always spin counterclockwise or clockwise. I've never seen one spin counterclockwise, but they're probably out there. I just haven't had any experience with it. So now you're going to go through and select which swash plate that you have. I have a HR-3 120 degree swash plate so you can see you have your servo 3 1 and 2 and that is going to be the typical align swash plate uh, depending on which helicopter you're setting up you can go through here and this will tell you everything so now we're going to go into a very important step which is your servo setup so now you have a servo chart here and this is going to show you all the different servos that there is so now this has a ton of different servos in it and it just goes on and on and on and on so this is going to tell you say for example since we are running the align i think we're running the 620s it'll tell you that center pulse is 1520 and refresh oh i'm sorry we're running the 615s so we got center pulse is 1520 and refresh rate is 165. so if you don't know what servo you have and what your center pulse or your refresh rate is go through your servo chart it will tell you so now we have, and now over here, you have your cyclic as first. So you have analog, digital, and high-end digital. We are running just regular digital. They're the standard DS615 servos, so 1520 pulse and 165 hertz. And then down for your tail servo, same thing. There's a servo chart. This will tell you exactly what servo you want to, if you have, or what servo you're going to be running. Give you your center pulse and your refresh rate. Again, we're running a tail specific digital at a 760 333. Now, you, if you're running a high end, you click high end. If you're running a standard, standard. Now, again, this is a V1 brain, so we don't have the option for motor driven tail. Now, if this was a V2, you would have the option for motor driven tail. So, if you're running this on a Blade 230S, or maybe you're going to do an M2, or you're making your own project, or whatever, you can do motor driven tail. So now this is going to be your swash plate setup. So now this will give you to where you, you can set your servos 190 or not 100, 90 degrees. Sorry, I can't talk. So you want to set your servos 90 degrees. So now servo one, servo two, servo three. You're going to go plus or minus until you get the servo arm 90 degrees. You don't use this to adjust a swash plate. You're going to use your linkages to adjust the swash plate. This is just to get your servos 90 degrees. And then your pitch and then this is going to tell you how much pitch up or down now i've set up a lot of icons and brains over the years for some reason i can never get equal pitch positive and negative setting it like this so i'll set it to my 14 degrees of positive and then my negative is always more i go into my radio and i adjust the pitch so it's equal positive and negative Maybe I'm doing something wrong, so I don't know, but this is the only way I can get an equal pitch both ways. It's usually equal one way and a ton more the other way. And then your cyclic percentage here. So your cyclic percentage is going to be adjusted up or down. Again, you're going to hear. So you use your cyclic plus and minus button to increase or decrease the cyclic throw while holding the stick at full deflection. This allows it to... When you get to that 100% point, that's how much throw that you're going to be getting. And you go up or down. So now our next setup is tail. So this will be able to reverse the tail servo either or direction. And this is going to be your positive. So this is how you set your endpoints. So it is very important on serv tail servos that you set those endpoints. So you want to make sure that when you give it full right stick or full left stick, that the servo is not binding. If the servo is humming, it's in a bind, it's not right. You want to adjust it so that the servo is all the way just before it stops. Or right when it stops, back it off a few. Same with the left. All the way till it stops and it binds up, back it off a few. That will make sure that you do not have a binding tail. Okay, so now we are in your blade size selection. I'm running a two-bladed head. Of course, this doesn't have a fly bar option. So I'm running two blade. You have three blade and then you have your different sizes. So now what this is gonna do is basically give you a user defined or a preset gain setting for your elevator uh, aileron. 
So we know that we're running 550 millimeter main blades. So we click the 515 to 650. Now, of course, if you're whatever size blade you're running is what you're gonna size. This is gonna give you a preset number in the software that you can adjust for from there. So now we are in the auto level and rescue setup. Now I don't use auto level in any of my modes, one, two, and three. Now this is, you can use this for whatever you want, but I do have rescue setup, which is going to be my auxiliary one channel. So I do have rescue setup. Now I get this question quite a bit too, that your helicopter drifts in auto level. So you click auto level and you can adjust the maximum angle degree, your auto level gain, your pitch, pitch rescue. What the pitch rescue does is that when you give it that rescue, it is gonna give you a predetermined amount of pitch to pull up and then your pitch duration. So what that does is that's gonna tell you when you flip auto level, for example, or rescue, not auto level when you flip rescue it is going to stay positive pitch for 0.6 of a second a second to whatever you set it to user defined is 0.6 of a second so just over half so when you go to set your auto level when you go to hit here and set you know collect select auto level it is very important that the helicopter is 100 percent level meaning if you have a forward tilt like the t-rex 550 is with a five degree tilt, you're gonna to want to put a bubble level on the tail, adjust the helicopter, uh, shim the skids up until the helicopter is 100% level, then select auto level. And you wanna level it forward and backwards, and you wanna level it side to side. You wanna make sure the helicopter is completely level, then select auto level, and I have found that has eliminated the drift issue. There might be another way to do it, that's just the way I figured out how to do it. Now again, if there's better ways to do this stuff, let me know in the comment section. So now, we are gonna go to your throttle out telemetry governor setup. Now I do not personally use governor in the icon. Uh, you can if you want to, that is 100% up to you. I run Castle ESCs, so I always set the governor in Castle. And I know a lot of people are gonna say that the governor in Castle sucks and you really should use it through the brain. The governor has worked great for me, so that's just what I know and that's what I do, but I will in the future start playing with the governor inside the software just so I know more about it. So now we're gonna go to your flying style setup. So now your flying style setup is going to be done through a user defined. So I set mine to a switch. So you have setup one, setup two, setup three. Now what this is gonna do is, for example, my setup one is my normal mode. This is my linear throttle. This is, you know, at zero throttle is zero motor. It's not gonna take off. And then as I raise the throttle, of course it goes up. And then I have my idle up one, which is going to be, I think a 70% flat throttle curve and my idle up two, which is 100% throttle. So setup one, I always set the sport flying because I'm not gonna be 3 ding the helicopter in normal mode. This is for takeoff. This is for landing. This is just for putt putting around, changing some stuff, wanna fly it real quick. So I always set the setup one to sport on all my helicopters. And this is stock gains at 30, cyclic gain at 39. And then my agility, I turned down to 50. I'll explain agility in a second. Now, setup two, which is idle up one. I have it into acrobatic mode because you're running a low head speed. You're not gonna be doing any kind of crazy 3D. You're just gonna be doing your normal soft 3D, your normal flying. So I have it just set to the predetermined aerobatic mode now i have my cyclic gains turned down to 35 i found that's where it was great and i have my agility at 60. so then setup three which is idle up to 100 head speed this is my all out gonna fly the crap out of the helicopter mode i have it to 3d mode i have my cyclic gains down to 35 as well but i have my agility down to 40. now your agility is going to be your overall feel of the helicopter so the higher your, your, your value is on your agility, the more the model's gonna feel, I guess, natural, or the more the model's gonna feel like a fly barred helicopter. The lower the gain numbers on the agility, or the lower the number, is gonna be the more precise and the more robotic, uh, the more locked in feel. So when you're in maneuvers or when you're doing something, the helicopter is gonna be, is gonna be locked. So I like to run a a lower gain setting so it just feels more locked and precise for me uh, it does not affect anything else you know speed of rotation anything like that that does not be affected by the agility 
So that is, you know, all user, this is all user defined. This is how you personally like it. So I set my helicopters up like this from the beginning and then I go fly and I come back and I adjust from there. Now, of course, this is going to be number 14, which is the end of the setup wizard. Just make sure your helicopter is moving right. When you tilt the helicopter left, swashplate should go right. When you tilt the helicopter backwards, swashplate should go forward. You tilt forward, it should go backwards. You tilt right, it should go left, so on and so forth. Same with the tail direction. When you move the tail of the helicopter to the left, which is going to move nose right, it should push or it should pull, which is going to suck the tail. And when you move nose left and the tail right, it should push the tail. So now let's go up to advanced menus. Now, if you're brand new at this, I would not even worry about advanced menus. Just set up, you know, through the setup wizard and go fly. It'll be more than enough for you. But with the icon, we have the beauty of adjusting everything. That's what I love about the icon. We can literally tune and adjust anything that we want. So first is going to be common and then we have setup. So this is going to be your receiver. This will just tell me, you know, receiver type is a DSMX, of course, bind, aileron. This will let me adjust any channel that I want. Uh, auto level slash rescue, I have is channel eight. And then calibration if you want it. And then again, this is your receiver input screen. So you can see your, you know, 100, 100, 100, 100. So basically the same thing as wizard for this part, but the only difference is here we can adjust what channel stuff goes in. Orientation is the same as wizard where top up wires back servos same thing it just gives you a more detailed uh, menu of it so you can adjust how much positive and negative throw you want depending on the different servos you have this works good if you're running like uh, gear a retractable landing gear on scale uh, any kind of bomb drops or whatever you're doing on scale you can adjust I don't know what that was but you can adjust how much throw the servo has you can also do that inside the menu. Now this is going to be your CCPM for your different, uh, like a fly bar style CCPM, which way everything is angled. You can manually adjust your swash plate balls. So your red, blue, and green is going to be the ball of the swash plate. And then you can manually adjust that if it's a custom swash plate and so on. I don't use any of that. Now your auto level or your rescue is going to be the maximum angle of degree of rescue. And you have, so now oh, here's another thing. So if you just put your mouse cursor over it, it's gonna tell you this parameter sets the maximum angle to which the unit will model will bank when in auto level. So right now it is set to 45. So that means the helicopter is only gonna bank 45 degrees. You can adjust this up or down. Uh, rescue pitch max is gonna be 75% pitch. This is gonna tell you that how much pitch the helicopter is gonna get when you flip the rescue mode and the duration like we spoke about in the wizard menu, how long it's gonna stay at that percentage or at that time. And then throttle and governor, this will let you different head speeds, one, two, and three. Your gain for your motor is electric, your different gains, your governor spool up, your ramp up rate, your ramp down rate, bailout rate, which bailout is a very nice thing if you are going to be doing a lot of practicing auto rotations. So if you flip your hold to do your auto and you need to abort the auto, that's what the bailout ramp rate is. So that way when you flip the hold back off, it... Can, you can adjust how long it takes to instantly spool the helicopter back up, which is something great when you're practicing auto rotations. So now let's go up to setup. Now I don't really mess with the common side, this side of the wizard or the advanced menu. Everything I always do is in setup, your input, your tail, and your cyclic. So now your input is gonna be setup one, two, and three, of course. So this is gonna be your cyclic dead band, your tail stick dead band, and then you have your aileron exponential, elevator tail exponential, and pitch exponential, which is also known as anti-gravity. Your input dynamics, your tail, and your pitch ball. Uh, this stuff here, I will mess with cyclic stick dead band. I don't like dead band, so I will adjust it down. Uh, exponential, I run all at negative, as you can see. I don't like exponential, so everything is always negative for that. And then pitch exponential, which is anti-gravity, I've been playing with, and it's pretty cool where it allows how much pitch is there up and down. I've tried negative, I tried positive. This is where it's set right now at negative 8, 10, and 15, and I seem to like it. Basically, it just adds how much pitch it adds for you, so the helicopter, you can kind of flip the helicopter and use very little collective to keep it there. So now your tail. This is going to set your tail different gains for every flight mode, which is the best thing about 
icon is you can literally adjust everything. And again, when you're going through your menus, you just hold your cursor. It's going to tell you what everything does. You just have to read. So whatever you want to know, your anti-rotation speed. I set my rotation speed high. So of course, setup one is 380. Setup two is 550. Setup three is 600 rotation speed. This is going to set the maximum rotation and degrees at seconds at 100% stick deflection. Now this is not going to mess with if you're moving the stick little left and right, it's going to, when you're at 100% throw, how fast the helicopter spins around. Your cyclic pre-compensation, pre again, it's going to tell you. It sets how much tail pre-comp system feeds in one cyclic is applied. So if, if you're doing hard imp, uh, pitch, pitch bumps, sorry, it will actually adjust how much tail you want, if you want more or less, to keep the helicopter solid. Same thing with the pitch pre-compensation. I have mine set at 25. This tells you how much pitch is uh, applied and when doing maneuvers. Now, if you're set too high, the, the tail will wag. If you're set too low, the tail will drift. So whenever you guys want to know, just read. Each individual, hold it over, it will tell you. I've never seen anything like it. It is awesome. Now, your cyclic. So your cyclic is going to be your aileron elevator, aileron elevator, aileron elevator on all three modes. Again, those are your flight modes. If you look at the top, you'll see the little green move. And that will tell you what setup you're in. And this is going to be your different gains. I re personally don't really mess with any of the gains too much. They're pretty good out of the box, so out of the box setup. But I do mess with your rotation speed. This will tell you how fast the helicopter will move again at 100% throw. So I always set setup one, I pretty much leave alone because again, it's normal mode, no need for that. But setup two and three, I will adjust. So setup two is 450, setup three is 550. I like a very fast, very fast responding helicopter. And then your agility again is what we went over in the common or the menu, menu wizard menu, sorry. Again, the higher the number, the more natural the helicopter feels, more like a fly bar. The lower the number, the more locked in the helicopter feels, more robotic. So now you have your timers. So now you can see a total have 102 flights on this helicopter, nine hours, 49 minutes. And you have your main, now you can adjust what you want at the time. I have my main belt, which is useless because I don't have a main belt, but I can do mufflers, cyclic servos, tail servos, thrust bearings. And this is just a timer to let you know, hey, I've got you know, 100 hours on this tail. or anything that you want to set it to again you can select on any of these whichever you want to set it to flight log glow plug fuel filters tail motor main blades tail blades so on and so forth very cool feature so then we go to diagnostics so this since it's a v1 i don't have uh log recording so v2s do but none of the v1s do that i know of so we have vibration recorded logs and real-time logs so with the recorded logs, you can download your log, you can zoom in and out, you can go through and pick a certain time frame. The 760, when I was having all those issues with the vibration and I didn't know what it was, it could have been a servo jerking. I went and pulled all my logs and I sat here for over two hours and I went through each individual servo and watched it for the whole five minute flight. I cleared everything, I went and flew it. Pulled that log, so I only had one to go through and did it again. And I watched each servo at the spool down time, the spool up time. I wanted to see if it was a servo that was just jerking, causing it. It was not. You can tell the same thing with vibrations. This will tell you if you have any vibrations throughout your flight, where you're at. Very, very cool feature to have. So, and then you have your manuals. This right here, you click on it. This will tell you how to do your telemetry, your dials, your Bluetooth. Anything that you want to know is right here. That's the best part about Brain Guys is you can literally do anything you want. And if you don't know how to do it, again, you just go to your whatever you want to do. You click it. You want to know what the, the proportional gain is going to do. You hold your cursor over it and it will tell you. So just take your time, read, go through everything. If you're a new guy and you're just trying to get your helicopter flying, wizard, wizard menu is all that you're going to want to go through. You don't even need to touch the advanced menus yet, but as you get advanced and you go through, and then when you're done, if you want to save your file, you can click save your file. Or if you need a file, somebody sends you a file, you can load a file from somebody else's machine. I've sent the file from my Blade Fusion 270 to a couple people. I've sent the file from the 550 T-Rex to a few people. And they can upload the file that I did 
and their helicopter is going to fly pretty much identical to mine. So awesome feature. You guys haven't tried Icon. I highly recommend it. Now let's charge the battery and go fly this thing and see what it's like. Okay, so now we are ready to fly. So we're going to do a test flight and check a couple things. Of course, first thing, like I mentioned before, is check your swash tilt forward, backward, tilt backwards, it'll go forward. You tilt right, it'll go left. Tilt left, it'll go right. Same thing with your tail. So you're gonna wanna check which way your tail slider is moving. So when you tilt the nose right, tail should go the counter way, which should be left to pull it. And when you go nose left, tail should go right, which will push it. Another easy way to check this is fold your blade in. And when you give it left stick, the blade should go left. Right stick, the blade should go right. I set a positive of three degrees. And then again, when you tilt the nose right, it should go left, nose left, it should go right. Okay, so now we got that done. We did our check, it's a little windy today. We're gonna go ahead and spool up into normal mode. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is get it into a hover. Let's see if we got no tail lag. Pyro's good, the balance lead's hanging out for the battery, but we got no tail lag. Okay, let's kick it up into idle up one. No tail lag. Kick it up into idle up two. No tail lag. Okay. Back into idle up one. Do a Pyro. It bounces a little bit in the stop. So we need to adjust that. Do it the other way. Bounces a little bit. All right, idle up two, do the same thing. We got a little bounce back. That's okay though, we can adjust that. So now let's do some normal flying. Normal flying around. We want to check and just see if we have any cyclic wobbles. See how it feels. Flip it over. We got that bounce back on the tail we got to take care of. Let's do some forward flying. Make sure it doesn't do any dolphining or anything crazy. So everything cyclic wise feels really good. Now let's do it into high head speed and try it again. Some normal fast forward flying. Make sure it's not doing any shakes, any dolphining. It feels great. Tail performance is great. Time remaining, two minutes. So now we know that we need to just work on that little bounce back on the tail. feels good cyclic wise so I'm very happy I might adjust the cyclic gains a little bit but that's just for my playing but out of the box setup it is perfect and then also let's check Puro consistency left and right which is another thing you need to adjust for all right so we're gonna Puro to the right full stick Puro to the left full stick the Pyros are even both ways. And now if they weren't consistent, say right, it would... So if you're Pyroing right and it looks like this, where it, and then it, where it starts slow and then gets fast and then slow and then fast, you can adjust that out underneath the tail dynamics. Nice slow Pyros, good. Inverted hover. So 
everything cyclic feels fantastic. So I just need to play with that tail a little bit. We got a little bounce back. We can adjust that out. We're out of our timers, only four minutes. Cyclic feel is great. Do that to your liking. TikToks, we do have a little bit of cyclic wobble, so we can mess with the gains a little bit on that. Right, let's set it down. Hopefully the wind noise isn't terrible. It is windy. So I hope this helps you guys learning and setting up your icon and your brain. Again, I am not the best pilot in the world, nor am I the best person that knows how to tune helicopters. So, you know, some of this might be, does not apply to you and some of it does. So, but I hope it helps you guys. Thank you for watching. Take care. Have a great day.